Hi guys, welcome to this free uh, lesson we just prepared for you. And this is something we are cooking for a new uh, workshop at Project Refix School. Uh, it will be released uh, during the summer and uh, it's called Automotive CGI with Claritz. So it will be a course just for uh, photo reader rendering about car and uh, we'll use port car and uh, some more general car models and we'll work on uh, different lighting condition and scene setup so we'll have a lot of really nice stuff and we'll try to prepare something really realistic so in the meantime I'm preparing something about the shading of the car and this is a preliminary sneak peek about some contexts so um, in this video we are going to work just on the tire so some shader like the the, the tire, the metal stuff, the disc, the brake, and stuff like that. The basic scene is this one. You see we have a scene inside, you have the complete asset, it's a free car model. You can download from the website, the 3dzip.org, and you have it there, but you see we have all the models set to, it's an ABC, so you have all the various meshes set to disabled, and you can see just some parts. If you like, you can play with the entire car. So that's our model. Uh, we can set to the ambient occlusion and we say to go for 0 0.5 for the distance of the ambient occlusion. And let's go with five layer of refinement. So uh, that's our model. Uh, it's really simple. We have no lighting inside the scene. We have nothing at the moment, so uh, we can start playing with our shading, the lighting, etc. etc. Um, let's go to create the basic lighting for the scene. So we get to create a new context. So Ctrl Shift C, and we have a new context, this one, and let's call it with the F2 key lighting. Inside lighting, we can create the lighting models, uh, so the lighting rig, sorry. So the first thing I like to do is uh, you can go directly inside lighting and you see that there you have the environment light and the image beta lighting. You can click over this one and you have the possibility to choose which is the texture you have to pick. So inside the right folder you have texture and you see that there we have three HDR map. Um, we have this one. Uh, we have the other one, and we have a map that I created for some workshops using uh, Terrigen. Let's get to pick this one. Okay, so press L key, and you see that we have the stuff set in the right way. Okay, that's the lighting. So here, if you like, you can start playing with uh, lighting. So let's say progressive rendering. And let's say that we have the denoiser. So it's really fast, as you see, to give you some feedback. Um, so that's the uh, basic light. And this one, let's say that it's the terrigen. We can uh, copy this one, Ctrl C, Ctrl B, and the second one will be a sunset. Ctrl C, Ctrl B. And the last one, we can set the right naming there with the F2 key. And this one will be the uh, interior. I'm going to use different um, maps. And uh, I downloaded the maps from the HDR Heaven website. So you can use the same. So we got to change something. Actually, we are using this map connected to the IBL and first of all to have the right quality we got to change something uh, there you see that we have no exposure is set to zero let's say 0 0.5 and then we have just 16 sample for pixel but we need a, a higher quality so let's say 512 okay nice it's done. So later we'll, uh, we'll play with our rendering engine. Okay, um, so uh, I like to make a rotation about the lighting, but uh, you know, we, we can do it later. 
So we can close this one. And I like to have the possibility to switch from one to the other one. To do something like that, uh, let's create a new context. And this one will be the textures. Okay. Later we go to use something like that. Um, by the way, we can actually just create um, a multi blend. So uh, let's get to this one. This one can be connected to the first one. Or we go to name the first one Tervagen. So we know that is the first one. The second one is set to on. That's why we see uh, a white rendering. By the way, we can just pick this one and connect the others. So we can copy this one and connect to the number two. So we know that the second one is the sunset. And then we have the last one, the interior. We have to activate the third one and it's connected to the third one. Okay, by the way, we have to change the texture. So uh, this is the sky, that's the sunset. So we need this one. It takes just a little bit to load. We can see the progress bar. You see it's loading the, uh, the map. And then the last one is the interior. So let's give us just a few moments to load the texture. Okay, if you like to see the image, obviously you have it there. It takes just a little bit to um, to make the preview because you know it's really big, so it needs to be uh, to wait just a little bit to have the preview. By the way, in this way you have the possibility to switch from one to the others because you have just to say, okay, this is the interior. Nice. Let's see the sunset. And that's the sunset. Or maybe say, okay, let's see the terrogen. Okay, that's the lighting. So uh, let's get to save the project. Okay. So actually the project is connected to this camera. This camera is the camera front and you have it inside the cameras. Uh, we can go inside the cameras. Uh, let's say that just for a moment uh, we get to see again the smooth and we get inside the image view, select this one and set to play and we say to use just 15% of the final sampling so it's really fast. Okay, uh, you know, we can play with a camera inside the, uh, the image view, it's not a problem so if you like you can do it. You see it's really not a big pain to do it. Okay, let's say that, for example, that's our point of view. And the problem is that you see the model has no uh, displacement or so we have to generate something directly with a shading uh, feature inside Clarice. So the first thing I like to do is to have um, a point there to give us the information about the um, I mean the depth of field. So let's pick the camera and we get to change just a little bit the focal length. Okay. I like to have a little bit more perspective. So you know in this way we have an higher perspective. Maybe it's a little bit too high, but you know, it's just to see uh, a bigger area of, uh, maybe we can go to 2.5, uh, sorry, centimeters. And then we can move forward the camera, backward, sorry. Okay, so let's create a new point. So new locator, and this one can be renamed to locator dof. We go to move and we can use the S key to say where we like to have the uh, depth of field point. Then in the camera, we can say to enable the depth of field. 
say, to use the locator as a focus object. And then you see that we have the depth of field set using the locator. So you can change it, it's not a problem. You can have just maybe a really low f-stop and you know, you will have the right focus there and everything will be out of focus. By the way, that's really to be used. So we can just set to off because it needs uh, a little bit of speed to be uh, to be done. So um, uh, then we can start playing with uh, uh, the uh, rendering engine, the path tracer. Uh, you know, I just prepared for you a really nice thumb mapping. So if you like, you can just set to on and you see that you have a completely different uh, term mapping for the look development. So uh, I just played with a, you know, with a curve, uh, creating new points and stuff like that. So uh, playing with the RGB. By the way, we need an higher quality because if we go, uh, let's say that we go to render just one area and then we say to change this area, for example, uh, to render just this one. Let's go back to the part tracer and we say to render at 100%, we'll have still grain, okay? If we let time, we'll work on the AOV. By the way, in this simple setup, we can just raise up the material sample count. This one will give us the possibility to have a better global illumination. Uh, and then, starting from this one, we can tweak the various sampling for each material and light. So, you know, the general lighting is done because we played with the IDL. And then now we can work on the material step by step. By the way, you see that the quality is really nice. So um, let's go back to maybe 10% because it's really fast. Let's remove the render region. And for the moment, let's remove the tone mapping. So we have the possibility to play with the material in a better way. Control S to save. So uh, let's go to, uh, to play with the material and then we go to add some types and finalize the project. So first of all, I like to have the displacement. Actually, we have no displacement. The model seems really high quality, but it's done using the uh, enable subdivision surface. You know, it's set to on and it is set the retrace desolation label to three. Uh, the default is this one, so the model is not so super high quality. By the way, uh, we go in this way and then we go to have the displacement. Uh, displacement is done using the displacement mode set to tessellation only, so we have just the tessellation. And I have a really high displacement adaptive span count, so we can add a really nice model. Uh, let's set the, uh, the highlight mode to bounding box, so we see just the model. Uh, we have to create the displacement, so let's go there and let's say that we have a new displacement. This one is the displacement tire. So we can pick this model and say to use the displacement tire. So now we have to play with the displacement because actually we have nothing. We have just the, um, the map and that's all. We have just the uh, mapping addiction. So we have to say which is the map that it's going to, uh, to give the right quality to the model. So uh, that's the displacement. Inside the displacement, we have to say uh, which is the bound. Uh, you can use a really high level there or you can decide the right proportion. By the way, let's say 10 meters, 10 meters, 10 meters. That's the maximum area where we can have the displacement. And then uh, let's start to play with one centimeter for the displacement. Okay, so now we need to play with a texture. So let's go there and uh, let's say that we go to add um, a map. So we start to play with a tile displacement. So uh, let's go with a map. Uh, the first one will be called uh, tile. The cow this. And we go to connect this one. We have no texture actually, so we have to decide which is, and it needs to be mapped to. So uh, first of all, we need the file. So let's go there. 
and inside the texture we have various tire car four key head. Okay, let's pick it. Okay, everything is done. We have just to uh, see the texture. So it's black and white. So we have to say to the single channel for be able to force luminance. So we'll be able to see the texture. Okay, now it's visible. So the problem is uh, we have to say to use a different kind of mapping. To do something like that, we can go up and say to use a cylindrical projection. Uh, it is 3D. We are going to use the x-axis. So axis is set to x. In this way we are going to use the right axis. By the way, we have to, uh, to scale in the right way the, uh, the map. So we can say fit to objects and we go inside the model. And inside the Aston Martin, we have uh, the gun sidewall is the right object. So let's wait for it. Now, another problem is that the model was out of scale because it was imported from 3ds Max. So we have to uh, say, for example, let's say that this one is uh, one meter. So it's 100 times bigger. So we are uh, OK. Now you see that we have the right model. So uh, now we can take care about some training tweaks I like to do to this one. And uh, to do something like that, we can use the remap node. So inside the utility, we have the remap. Remap is really nice because we can completely change our texture is playing. And uh, I like to do something like that. So let's go to the image view so we don't need to see changes step by step. And uh, we see this is the texture. This is the remap, and let's say that we go to see just one area. So let's set to play, and we go to scale this one. Okay, just this simple uh, little area. So let's say that the um, the first point as a lower. So we get to create more contrast in this way. So let's say minus 0 0.28. And for the output, we go for a really high value. Let's say 2.2. .2. So we are, you know, the map was uh, fit zoomed, so we see everything. So you see in this way, we start to see uh, an higher displacement. Uh, by the way, maybe uh, instead of using a, a, a different um, setup, let's go to have another remap later to make some more tweaks. And uh, maybe we go to change just the output. We go really, really high, so we should enhance the, let's go 2.5. It should be really high, so we should see a bigger displacement that's perfect fit zoom and we can just tap down there okay so in this case i think we can go lower there let's say maybe uh, 065 so it will be lower than before and then another thing uh, we need to uh, you know to have some kind of detail over the side too because actually you see that we have no uh, information like text and stuff like that. So to do stuff, uh, some stuff like that, we need another another um, texture I just prepared. And uh, we can go for, let's say that here we have more space. Let's go for another map. And this one is uh, type side this. Okay. Uh, we get to choose uh, what's going on there. Uh, so we go for the UV and we go to choose a texture I found 
over the web. It's it's free, so it's not a problem to use it. And uh, it's this one. So we get to remove uh, everything about the print multiply. So we have just this color, and you will see in a few how it works. By the way, let's remove. Okay, you see that's the map. You see that we have some nice information, and uh, I like to have it so visible. So, oh. Uh, we could just to make some adjustment I brought for you, it's about the scaling. Uh, let's say that this one is set there. It takes just a little bit. Okay, you see that it's going to create displacement there because it's too big. So we got to scale a little bit the UV scaling and I found a nice compromise there. 0, 8, 7 and 0, 8, 7. So it's just a little bit uh, lower the scaling over the other axis. And on the tiling we have edge and edge, so we have black and black. It's the latest pixel there, so we have no, no tiling, you see. Okay, so now it's there. By the way, uh, we see just the displacement on the side. We lost this one, so we have to take care about this problem. And to do something like that, we need a blend map. So let's go to use a blend. So we say that the first map is the previous one, the second map is this one, and now we have the connection using this one. By the way, we need a mask to say how we have to mix, so we like to have this one just over the side. So I prepared a mask for you, uh, it's map file, and this one is the type displays mask. We can connect this one as mix, and this map will be really simple. Uh, it's another texture I prepared for you. And this inside the texture is the mask. Okay, it's okay. So that's the map. You see that this is a mask that is controlling just this area. So we have the displacement over one side, but we have to use the same. Uh, the same mapping we used for the other. So we can essentially uh, maybe write the data that is there. Uh, I have everything written so I can just replicate. So we have the, uh, let's say that there we have no update, so it would be faster. Uh, let's say that this one is cylindrical and then we have the x-axis, sorry, it's set to pause. Okay, um, and then we have there um, minus 1.9073 uh, by the way we can just before use this one so we have essentially some data there uh, this one is 0 needs to be tweaked a little bit and there this one is 1 minus uh, 9073 and there it is higher because we need a different scaling. Uh, maybe just a little bit less. And then that's all. It should work. So let's say that we have again the preview. It needs to update the displacement. Okay. And we have it. So Actually, it's, uh, it is creating the displacement over the side and also over the, uh, the top area. So we are creating both. And uh, this one, let's say that we force the luminance just to be sure because it's black and white. So I'm not sure if it's, it is loading in the right way. Um, and uh, let's say that we like to have a lower Mix two. By the way, you know it's using the map, so it it is not needed. So actually, actually, it's really high. So if needed, we can go lower with this one, and uh, having to have a lower displacement because you see it's uh, visible enough. Um, so if you like, you can do it. 
So essentially, oh, sorry, there is a disconnection there. So essentially, we need just to remap. This one is there, and then it's okay, it's right. So the to make it not or less visible over the side, we have to pick the lower uh, output color, that is the black there, and let's say that this one is higher. So in this way, it's more visible, the black displaced from this one. Maybe it's too much. You see that it's lower than before. Maybe we can go for 0, 4, and it should work. Uh, sorry, that's right. We have to go higher. So let's say 0, 6. Okay, it should be enough. It's not so much, but it's worse. Okay, so we have our tire. Uh, let's say that now it works nicely. So it is done. Uh, space bar to move it, control X. Then we can go there. And we can say that we can prepare more tiles inside our viewport just to have something nice. So we go there and we select all meshes that are um, part of the tire. Okay, and uh, right mouse button, and uh, we can see to make a combine. A combine is a mesh, a new mesh that is made by the combination of the others. So let's say that we go to have it there. Perfect. Now inside the asset, you see that we have a combiner. Let's say that this one is combiner tile. If we go to move it, it works. You see, it's a new tile. So we can directly rotate over the y-axis, the z-axis, sorry. So z-axis, uh, let's say 90, okay. And then we can move it. Uh, the pivot is not in the best position, so we get to move it manually. But you know, you can do it essentially as you prefer. So for example, right mouse button, open with 3D view. So just making some adjustment in a really nice and fast way. Press the INS key. And we go to move it there. You see it's at the base, maybe just a little bit higher. And then press ins. Okay, nice. So um, let's move it, for example, there. Let's see it's in the right position, maybe just a little bit in the front. Okay, so if you like to have it uh, more, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. And then with the move, we can add the S key and we can decide where we like to put. Maybe it needs just some adjustment. Okay. And we can rotate a little bit to make some changes. And then again, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. And we go to move it, use the S key. And then maybe just a little bit up and rotate again. Then we can pick both Ctrl C, Ctrl V, W, move it there. This one needs to be moved. Then we can make a rotation for both. And then let's pick just one. And just pick this one. Okay. And then we can move it to have uh, some little differences. Oh, sorry. I think I made another rotation. Okay, nice. So let's move it there and let's make a rotation over the right axis and over the right one and then move it. Okay, done. Uh, we can pick the first one, control, sorry, control Z. Uh, so the first one, control C, control V. And we move it forward. Let's say that this one has no rotation at the moment. Let's make it Maybe. Okay. And then we can 
just rotate. You see, we are not going to create to use complex uh, complex setup for pivot and stuff like that. So we are going really everything manually to see how it moves fast. It is amazing how much it's fast. Okay, it should work. Nice. Control S. So if we go in the image view, we choose this one and play, remove the... Okay, we can find a nice camera position over there. Okay. Okay, so that's the camera we are going to use for the rendering. Uh, so we can say that this one is the camera front. Then um, let's go in the 3D view. Uh, the image view is set to pose. We don't need it. So there, let's say that we have another camera. And this one is the camera tire. So we say to use the camera tire. Okay, so we can pick this image, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and that's the image look tire. Uh, image look tire as a layer and the background layer is using the camera tire. Okay, so actually if we go in the render, we have this one, this is using the old camera, and the new one that's going to render just uh, the first tire, so we can find the best. Okay, if you like to see uh, really near the tire. Okay, so this one can be the right one. Uh, so control S. So we have also this one set to the right in the right way. Uh, so it's time to to play with the uh, with the various material. Uh, to play with the material, uh, we can work directly there. So we can set to progressive rendering. We have the optics denizer and we can start playing with the material. So uh, let's start playing with the metal for this one. So select this one. We have no material and we can say to choose material. Let's go inside. We have no context, so control shift. C and we have this new context let's call it materials select this one and here new material sorry it's not a context so new material and let's say standard and this one will be the black metal okay and choose. So uh, black metal, uh, I think we can go with a really nice and simple material. Um, let's say that this model is show, let's go for bounding box, so we see in the right way, but I think it's fast enough to play directly in the image rendering. So play, and we go for just this area, and move it there. Okay, nice. So uh, let's go with black metal. And uh, we go for something really simple. So uh, we need for sure to have a better glossy reflection, but we can talk about it later. Uh, we have glossy reflection, so we don't need so much um, uh, depth for the indirect path. So we can say that we have just maybe one bounce or two bounce there. So let's say maybe one to speed up everything. Okay, or maybe we can say two. Uh, it will be really fast in this way. 
Um, so, uh, talking about the color, uh, I like to make some uh, coloring, but nothing so complex. So we can go for a dark color. So let's set to close some stuff here. And uh, we go for a really dark color. Okay. And then we play with a metal. So let's say that it is highly reflective. So we say that this one is metallic. And the metallic reflection is higher. So let's say maybe uh, a little bit higher. So five, five, and five. And about the roughness, let's say that it's zero actually. So we see the reflection. Then we have to play with the, the roughness in a few. Um, so about the coloring. And uh, we need also to create some bumps. Uh, by the way, uh, let's scale everything so it's bigger. Okay. So the coloring can be done using a procedural map. So we go for procedural. And we go for cellular noise. Connect to the diffuse front. Obviously, it needs to be uh, changed a little bit to have the right coloring. So let's say that, uh, first of all, the mapping needs to be changed. By the way, let's say that the set color is a gray. Uh, let's say it's something like we can write directly there. So let's say 0055. Zero, zero, five, five, Five five and five five, and the base color is completely black. Uh, then about the repetition, let's say we can see the texture there. Uh, space bar to move it. Okay, let's say three three three. So we have less repetition, and then we say we got to change the border. Let's say that it's linear, and we go higher. So we see just some dots. Uh, let's go at 90, 80, and let's say let's border sides. Okay, we don't see it because it's really little. Um, it is something really subtle. By the way, it, it it is nice because you know it is something that is related to the um, to have some dots over the surface. Uh, let's say fit to bounding box, but we go to have a cubic map. Let's say cubic, it's uh, right there. And let's say that it's fit to Aston Martin, we say black. Okay, and about the scaling here needs to be tweaked because I have the right uh, position. Okay, and here is, let's copy this one. Okay, and here, we have the same, so Control C. Oh, sorry, that's six. Sorry, seven, and one six six, one. And here, Control C, Control V, but there is three. Dot eight one four seven, and here it is zero. And about the scaling, it needs to be a little bit bigger. Let's say 32 there and 69, 69. I'm not uh, wasting uh, your time because, you know, I made all the tricks to have it nicely visible. 002, 002 and 002. So we are talking about really tiny dots over the surface. It is visible just if you go really near with a uh, with a camera. By the way, it will be nice when you are going to create some really nice and big rendering. Okay, so that's how it needs to be, how it can be used. Then let's go to control the roughness. Uh, we get to control the roughness using the uh, another fractal. So let's go for a fractal noise. But I like to use a tree planner to have it uh, put in the right way in all uh, in each side, so tree planner and connect to old plane, and then we can connect this one to the roughness for the specularity. You see that the specularity is changed, 
and we have to skate in the right way. So let's say that the color is uh, 0, 2, so it's a gray, 0, 2, 0, 2, and the other one is 0 0.065, 0 0.065, 0 0.065. In this way, we have just a little bit of glossiness all around and uh, then we have just the scaling about the mapping that is uh, changed so we have the possibility if you like to make it more visible in any in any uh, in any way where you like to have it uh, by the way we don't need this one so we can use if you like you can use for example the planner or stuff like that it's not a problem so then i like to have a little bit of bumping over it to have a bumping we have to say uh, to have the normal bump map because we are going to use a normal uh, a standard texture and then we go to have a fractal noise uh, the fractal noise will be uh, similar to the other one so we can go to have the same one ctrl c ctrl v we go to change the color so let's say that's the input uh, we have to scale obviously this one because you see that now the bumping is really really high by the way before everything we go to change the mapping so let's say that this one is uh, here it is something around uh, white this one is black and then we say that we have the normal light so we have everything with the high level uh, let's octave because we don't need so much detail and then this one is really really low so I like to have a subtle bam just something really low uh, you see actually it's high because the bump map needs to be tweaked so we are talking about some uh, lower than millimeters so let's say 0 0.001 maybe we can go lower so let's say uh, 0.5 so a really low amount so if you go really near you will see the bumping okay and control s okay so uh, this one is done uh, we can go for this metal uh, it will be really uh, really simple this one is uh, simply uh, a really basic shader nothing special so let's say that we go there and inside the material we say that you have a new material standard and this one is a low range metal uh, so uh, let's go to the metal okay um, parameter uh, this one needs to be tweaked so let's say that um, we have the diffusion that is set to black or you can use zero okay uh, then we say that we have a little bit of reflectivity so let's say that the reflectivity is 50 percent it is again metallic and the reflection is higher at this uh an orange color so we say uh the red is 0 0.6 and then zero zero seven and then zero so you see it's an orange color and uh, about the reflection we have just to say that it is 50 percent that's okay we have a little bit less roughness and that's all that's all i don't want to to create something complex so it's a really simple material I, I know that some parts of this model has problem with uh, uh normal so we can go with double to be sure that everything is working nicely um so uh, this one is done uh, we have this model it's, uh, this is the uh, air valve and about this one can have uh, a chromic material so let's go to create and we go for material and let's say again new standard and this one is a chrome uh, chrome material you can do as you prefer it's not a problem 
uh, we go for something simple again so we say that we have no uh, this is not the crumb okay let's go to the crumb we can set to zero this one and then we have a good reflectivity so we leave for 100 percent we say that we have just a low roughness and then if you like you can have a dielectric with a really high IRR and that's all it's just a reflective material with nothing special so uh, then we have another piece there this one uh, this one can have another material uh, we go for something like a silver material uh, not not so complex but it will be a little bit maybe different from the metallic material we just created so let's say new material standard and this one is a silver and apply it. Let's go to the silver shader and again also this one is similar to the previous one so we have uh, the fuse set to zero or black it's not a problem you can leave as you prefer and then we have a nice reflectivity so we have 100% and we have a little bit of roughness maybe 8% and about the uh, Fresnel we go for dielectric with a higher level of IRR. So it's, you see, partially reflective and uh, it should be enough to have a nice material. So uh, then we have uh, the disc, that is this part, uh, and we have essentially the brake that is important too. So I think we can go to work with uh, the braking so um, let's say that the breaking as a new material but before we get to save so um, material a uh, new material standard and this one is the break and apply let's go near us to see how this looking okay so uh, break will be simple but maybe well, we'll add a little bit more detail than before so uh, the brake you know uh, it is a sport car we can have different coloring it's not a problem by the way we go for something nice so we get to change the front color let's say we have 0 0.6 uh, 0 0.45 and 0 um, 17 okay so you see this kind of coloring and really poor yellow uh, we have a nice reflection so 100% we go lower with the roughness and then we go higher with the reflection for the Fresnel so you see uh, the electric and let's go at 3.2 so we have some nice reflection if you like you can play also with the uh, reflection color and stuff like that but you know the model is not so high quality we go to break a little bit the reflection using um, a noise map so let's say we go for a bump map we go to connect to the normal and we go to uh, again a fractal and this one is essentially connected there now it's really high and uh, we have to tweak it by the way let's say that we go to use a cubic map and about the mapping we say that it's scaled to the break and uh, the break this model is the um, the break 04 so we say that we have this one that is going to be fit to the break 04. Okay, it's the last one. Okay, so it's scaled. Uh, we have various problems. Uh, first of all, uh, we have to tweak a little bit the noise. I removed the turbulence, so I like to see just some uh, bumping over there 
and nothing special you see just some variation uh, the problem is the scale because it needs to be tweaked and it is also the bad mapping because it's one meter so it's extremely high uh, I found a nice scaling so we can use the one I found it's 0.0015 0.03 and 0 .0, uh, 0.02 okay it's little enough but the scaling is too high so let's say one millimeter this one is one centimeter is still too high so let's say maybe just a little bit it's still really high I think we can go lower so let's say maybe 0 0.7 it's still really high. Let's go 10 times lower. So it's just a little bit. Okay, you see we have something like that. And maybe if we like, we can scale a little bit the, this one, let's say two time on each axis. So we, we don't lose time to see if it is enough or not. Okay. You see it, it is starting to be nice okay then we have this model uh, you know uh, it is a text you see that the model is a little bit bad about about you know the face uh, so we should have something to do about the smoothing uh, so let's get to double check the smooth now let's say that we go for the smoothing angle let's see okay it's a little bit better than before let's go lower let's try 90 because I think there is something wrong okay let's say with 89% um, the material would be really really simple let's say that this one has a material that is essentially a red color so material standard and let's call it red and apply and then we go oh, sorry then we go to the material uh, the material is essentially a red color with a little bit of reflective so let's say that this one is red completely red okay and about the reflection we say that it's a little bit lower and then maybe you can leave all the other parameters to the default okay control s then let's go to play with the uh, let's see it is going nice you see that everything has the right material so let's play to the with the disc this would be simple. Uh, we get to create a nice material for the disk. So let's say we go to select this one and then we choose the material. So inside material, new material, standard disk and apply. Okay, we go to use a disk map to control how it's, it's, it's reflective so uh, let's go to the disk material um, this material uh, remember that we have to tweak all the um, uh, sampling for everything it is something we are not doing uh, so the front color is obviously black and then about the reflection we say that it's 100 percent and let's go lower with a uh, roughness so let's say for the moment five and uh, let's go higher with the IRR, so eight. So we have a nice metallic material. And uh, then we go to have just a little bit of anisotropy. So let's say uh, 49.95. So just a little bit. It is, you see, really subtle. It is just enough to give uh, a, a really nice disc look. Uh, by the way, we need some maps to control how it is playing. So uh, I have a texture and uh, so we need to put there a map file 
uh, but we have to stay inside. Okay, we have to move some stuff I created before. So inside the texture. So inside the texture, we're gonna have the map. This is the disk map. And uh, we get to connect this one as um, a bump map. So, or maybe before we go just for the strength, for the reflection. So let's say that this one is the texture and uh, we have to load the right one. So inside the texture, we have the breaks. You see it's this one. It needs to be uh, tweaked because the coloring is not so nice. So I like to control, you see that now the reflection is a little bit different over the disk. And to do stuff like that, we can use both a color correction, we can use the remap, we, we go to use both. So the first thing we do is to use a color correction. Let's use this one and connect and close. Uh, the map with the color connection will be essentially with no saturation, so it's black and white. And let's go to rise up the game because I like to have more reflectivity, okay? And then we go to use the remap to control a little bit the, how the map is behaving with its color. So let's go again in the texture and we go again to use a remap. So connect there. Okay. We say that uh, the low will be set to a uh, half. So we go for one. So we are essentially inverting the color and then the last one is still higher than one so let's say 1.4 so fit zoom you see that now we are up and the texture is really really high about the color but everything is uh, burned because we are clamping the color so to do something we can press with our middle mouse button so we have another point and this one is able to give us some information. So you see that we have back some coloring and uh, let's say that this one is lower to maybe something like that. So we have some areas where we have nice reflection and some areas where we have lower reflection. And it is nice because it is uh, behaving like uh, it is um, a real uh, disk and uh, we can go lower maybe with the roughness too because we are going to add uh, the bumping. So uh, let's see what happens. Uh, we need the bump map connect to normal. Uh, we go to have uh, a color correction like the previous one. So let's say Ctrl C, Ctrl V but let's say that is connected there but this one as one for the game so we have just the color correction to remove the saturation and then actually we have uh, no remapping so maybe we can just leave in this way the problem is actually that we are uh, we have a really high bump level because we are talking about one meters so let's go really low with this one uh, let's go, for example, to 0, 0,1 millimeter. So you see it's slow, but maybe it's still high. Uh, you see, it, it's like something having a really hold uh, disk. It can be done, but it is really low. So let's go to 10. It is 10 times lower. Let's scale the area to see just one area there and uh, we can close this one and have more space there still more space okay let's say 50 percent quality and about the uh, roughness i think we can go lower let's go for example one so we have a nicer reflection because you know having the bump it is something that is giving us something similar to the roughness i think we can go still lower 0 0.5 so it's really low but we have a nice reflection okay I think that's nice enough 
Okay, so uh, just for a moment, let's go at 50%. Let's go lower at 20 and remove the render region. That's what we have at the moment. The quality is high, okay? We have a really nice rendering. 